Well, I hope you all are using protection now. <laughs> this is fun for you, huh, Mr. No, Trump? it is not fun for me at all. No, I'm, I'm talking about, about the threesome. I'd rather him do it with me than behind my back. Before they made me look bad, this, most of the threesomes were her idea. They were. We see a lot of deadbeat dads on this show, but this one is on a whole other level. Miss Phillips is suing her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Gibbies, for $1,000 in child care expenses. She's convinced he's the father of her two-month-old daughter, Jordan, but he's been dodging paternity tests like a pro. This is gonna get Miss I. You are suing your ex boyfriend boyfriend for $1,000 in child care expenses you claim he has ignored since denying that he is the father of your two-month-old daughter, Jordan, whom he refuses to meet. Today, you have petitioned the court for a paternity test to prove he is the father and are looking to recover your $1,000 uh, child care expenses. So right away, Miss Phillips is spilling the tea. She's telling the judge how she thought Mr. Gibbies was the one for her. But hold up, he goes to a spiritual convention and comes back telling her to hit the road. She ends up in a hotel crying her heart out. Then he goes to a spiritual convention. Yes. And comes home and tells you to get out. Yeah, he told me he had to go because he was working on himself or whatever. So I was like, well, oh. it's late. You know, can I just wait till the morning, just go to my grandmother's house? But you know, it was late. It's the middle of the night. Yes, it was like 12, 1, 2 maybe. So he takes me to a hotel. I'm in the car crying, boo-hoo, and I'm like, why? You know, why? He was like, he can't do this no more. He gotta, he gotta do right. Mr. Gibbies, on the other hand, isn't holding back either. He's throwing shade left and right, claiming Miss Phillips has a history of being, well, let's just say, not so faithful. He's convinced he's not the father of little Jordan and isn't about to cough up that cash. <laughs> that I'm even there. I'm asking her, I said, hey, you going with me or not? No, uh-uh. And so she's you shaking stay her head yes. Yeah, so she want to stay here with the with the guy that we just, that, we, that I just got into an altercation with. Then the next event, we get to... Let me stop at that event, because I need to understand mm. from Miss Phillips now, why That's is not... it if you came to the party with him and you guys were together when I, there was an altercation, I, why didn't you leave with him? The only reason why I didn't leave with him because he, the dude was still hot. I've been around that family for years. Now, things take a spicy turn when Mr. Gibbies spills the beans about Miss Phillips allegedly cheating. He's dropping bombshells left and right, claiming she admitted to being unfaithful. Trust issues? Anyone? Oh, and there's more. She told me that, but when I first got back, she told me that she didn't. Nothing happened. I was with my brothers. That he story didn't. stayed for about a month and a half until finally she broke out and said, yeah, I did cheat, but it wasn't with who I was with that night. So the trust is going out the window, but you're still with her? I'm still with her. Then, another situation where I was with, uh, talking to a, a friend of mine outside during a party, and he was telling me, um, yeah, uh, I was with this one girl, man. We was you know, who's in the back seat? We doing it. Miss Phillips tries to defend herself, explaining why she didn't leave with Mr. Gibbs at a party and how she was just trying to keep the peace. But Mr. Gibbs ain't buying it, folks. He's got his doubts and he's not afraid to voice them. I didn't even feel good about it at all. But when I go through his stuff, the bag that he took to Miami, I see condoms in the open and they open and one missing. Had the relationship ever been positive? Yeah, it's been for good. You. Yeah, it's been good. A lot of times, like, cause it's been time that we actually did things together. I mean, we acted like a family. He's he had his two girls. I had my boy. We was, you know, I was we was doing things we were supposed to do in a relationship. We just had a real relationship. It just and Yep. Just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, Mr. Gibbies drops another bombshell about a mysterious black car incident. He's painting Miss Phillips as a real wild child, and she's not taking it lying down. The courtroom is heating up. Statement to the court, you also talked about tech messages. I had went to jail for about two months. And while I got, when I got back out, the first thing I'm, I'm gonna do is go through your phone. Multiple dudes are in there making flagrant dudes, text messages. Um, oh, I'm horny for you, daddy, and all this other kind of and stuff. And that's a lie, we yeah. wasn't sexual. Multiple text messages from and multiple dude, different guys. Again, it, five, and five different numbers okay, at least. But yet, I even called a couple of them back and I'm like, hey. Girls. With accusations flying left and right, it's getting hard to know who's telling the truth. Miss Phillips is adamant that Mr. Gibbs is the father of her daughter while he's standing his ground, denying it all. A long distance I relationship, so I but know. how much How much can I do this when I'm not at doctor's appointments? I'm, I'm not there doing the pregnancy of this child. I'm not, I mean the labor of this child. I'm, I'm not there. I'm absent. But even still, when she came back for her birthday, I took her out. She came back to visit for another reason. She ain't come down to visit for me. She came down to visit for another reason. So, she left. She left. During that time, you kept in contact, but you didn't make the effort to go down to see her. And just like that, it's time for the moment of truth. Will Mr. Gibbs step up and take responsibility, or will Miss Phillips be left to raise little Jordan on her own. Strap in, folks. The DNA results are in. Mr. Gibbs, this court has determined that you are her father. That's it. How do you feel?
I'm completely fine with that. It never was a point all where I that, felt like I didn't want. That. Well, I mean, we got we got all the determination, that. and I can move on. Like, I'll be that nasty to not know who my baby daddy is. Ever heard of selective memory? If not, listen to this. So we've got Mr. Webb here claiming he never had any hanky panky with Ms. Cole, but she's out here saying otherwise. He stage is set, and things are about to get wild. There's no chance whatsoever that you fathered the defendant's six-month-old daughter, Majestic. You say your evidence will shock this courtroom. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Cole, you and your mother say you're 100% certain that Mr. Webb is your child's biological father and say the only reason he's denying your baby is to save his relationship with the woman he's been with for the past three years. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Cole is convinced that Mr. Webb is the father of her baby girl, Majestic. She's not holding back, and neither is her mom, who's in the courtroom ready to spill all the tea. Mr. Webb drops a bombshell. He says he never even slept with Ms. Cole. The audience is shook, and so are we. And I know he stayed with me for two months and he slept in my bed with me for one night and we had sex. April 11th. That's when you believe you conceived your daughter? Yeah. Mr. Webb, this is strange. What was the nature of your relationship? We never had sex or anything. We were just friends. We would chill out. That was it. You were never intimate with her in any way. I never stayed in her bedroom. I stayed out on the couch. That's Ms. Cole is sure that they did the deed on a wild party night. Mr. Webb insists they were just friends, chilling out, and never crossed any lines. But Ms. Cole isn't backing down, and her mom is there to back her up. It's a he said, she said situation, and it's about to get worse. I told her to take it down, she refused to because she's crazy. You know dang good and well that me and my husband took care you the whole time you, you were there. I didn't see you, you, know, you one you, time the no. whole time I was yeah, there. Yeah, you were in her All right, let's get some order. You're in her You're right, though. You need help I'm just sorry, much. Let's get some I'm order. I'm sorry, you're not in my mind. I'm getting... So, Ms. Cole, you said you and your husband were taking care of Mr. Webb? Yes, and my grandkids and anybody else that needed. The judge is trying to get to the bottom of this mess, asking Mr. Webb why he was staying with Ms. Cole if he had a girlfriend. Things are getting spicy. Let's be respect. So anyway, she was telling me that they were sleeping together and stuff. He wasn't even there for three weeks. He was there for a week, maybe a week and a half. Just over there? Yes, he was hanging. I knew they were hanging out. I don't understand this, do you, Jerome? I never knew they were talking. We didn't even know that they I were together. I never knew they were talking that's that's we have. six times a day. How did you not <laughs> She's know? She's the one that called me with his friend. She had heard her voice in the background numerous times. How does that make sense? Ms. Cole recounts the night she believes she conceived Majestic. It's a wild story, and Mr. Webb is squirming in his seat. The tension in the courtroom is palpable, and we can't wait to see how this plays out. I move on, and this is not doing either of us any good, so just do me a favor and stay out of my life in the inbox. At this point, I'm thinking, and I feel like she's trying to say that I'm the baby daddy, but not, but just hinting, not actually saying it. All right. Okay. So here's the second one. This is what came next. I told her, I said, I'm not trying to be mean. I just want this to end. Cause I'm not a mean person. I'm not a hateful person. But when it comes to her and what she's put me through with the lies the last year. Mr. Webb's web of lies is unraveling as Ms. Cole reveals more details about their alleged night of passion. The audience is gasping and we're here for all the juicy details. This case is heating up and things are about to boil over. Did he ever acknowledge that he was the father? He admitted to my oh, dad. You are not. a liar. He yeah, admitted to my cousin that he he was the dad. What do you think Mr. Webb is Ms. Ms. Cole's motive if you say you've never slept with her? Wh why manufacture all of this? I think she's obsessed with me. She, there, she's obsessed with me or something. No. I don't know what it is. I've been trying to figure There's out There's one reason year. why I'm here. Her to know is. for sure he's the dad. The back and forth between Ms. Cole and Mr. Webb is reaching a boiling point with accusations flying left and right. It's a showdown of epic proportions. Ms. Cole's mom is calling Mr. Webb a punk bum and spilling all the tea about their awkward living situation. When were you intimate with the other guy? You don't even know. May, May, uh... 15th, 16th. How do you get those two mixed up? That's over a month. How are you gonna say that you think it's him and then over a month? Because the due date. The due no. date. The doctor no, gave the due date. These are things that she has literally made herself believe. She made herself believe these lies that she's telling. But Mr. Webb says he never slept with you. And he did. But he did. For sure, yeah. The judge is trying to make sense of it all, but the chaos in the courtroom is reaching peak levels. As the tension mounts, Ms. Cole and Mr. Webb continue to go back and forth with no end in sight. But we don't have all day. So Judge Lake intervenes with the best thing we've heard all day. It's time for DNA to Test results. Mr. Webb, you are not her father. Woo! Oh! oh. You just yeah. Crazy. Uh, You're crazy. Ooh, you need Webb. to go to a mental hospital. Ms. Webb. There, get her there. Get her there. Mr. Webb, Ms. Reams. 
stop. But I want a lie detector. Listen, don't we don't clown in this courtroom. Ms. Mitchell claims that her childhood sweetheart, Mr. Robinson, stole her virginity and got her pregnant with their daughter, Raya Lynn. But hold on, Mr. Robinson is denying paternity because he found out Ms. Mitchell was allegedly sleeping with four other men. So much for stolen virginity. Today, because you claim your childhood sweetheart stole your virginity, got you pregnant, and is now denying paternity of your two-month-old daughter, Rylan. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Robinson, in your defense, you claim you doubt paternity because after Ms. Mitchell told you she was pregnant, you found out she was sleeping with four other men. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Mitchell testifies, saying that Mr. Robinson pressured her into losing her virginity, and boom, she ends up pregnant. One time, folks, just one time. But wait, did they use protection? Nope, no protection in sight. And that's how baby Rylan came into the picture. Did you use protection? No. No protection. All right, so that's, that's a, a recipe for Disaster. Well, no, for baby making We're and for case, responsibility disaster. and, and her consequence. Case, disaster. So hold on now, ma'am. Hold on one second. I'm going to get to you in one moment. So you tell him you're pregnant. Yeah. She and didn't what even was tell me I, she was pregnant, Your Honor. She called. had one of her friends she grew up with. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Mr. Robinson claims he only found out about the other men in the picture through some mysterious Facebook messages. Who's spreading the gossip? We don't know, but it's getting messy. Ms. Mitchell, on the other hand, is standing her ground, saying it's all a big fat lie. Who's telling the truth? We're about to find out. And hope was raised better than to lay around sleeping with men. And as far as him saying that he was in jail, I have proof right here that he didn't get arrested until two days after the baby was born. So if he was in jail, really? if he was Girl, in jail, how did he get arrested again? again? With my daughter in the hospital. And yes, his sister was there and I said, well, where's Ryan? It wasn't and she the day said, after, it was the ninth. I'm the one right that there. said, Fast forward to the birth of baby Rylan. Was Mr. Robinson there to witness the miracle of life? Nope. He sent his sister instead. Yeah, he sent his sister to the birth of his child. That's a new one. But wait. Mr. Robinson tries to clear his name, saying he was actually in jail at the time. I was I was picked up on more than one charge. He and I was laying in a bed for 14 no, hours in labor. He, brought, he literally. And you chose to lay on the bed. Okay, okay. And no, but but you had nothing in it. You had nothing in it. Okay, he but cheated on I do. He, he didn't cheat on me, sweetie. Yeah. We wasn't together. Yeah. I've never done anything to this girl ever. I've never disrespected her. She's immature her. I never and childish. Nothing. Ms. Mitchell's mom, Diana, steps in with some receipts, proving that Mr. Robinson was only arrested two days after baby Rylan was born. So, if he was in jail, how did he manage to send his sister to the hospital? The plot thickens, folks. She won't, she won't let her spend time with me because of Heather, which has no reason. If she is mine, she has three other siblings. She has she two has brothers. Zero. She has zero. two brothers and a sister. Regardless, if they're not mine biologically, I've raised them as mine for the last three years of my life. They call me father they look up to me as a father because i've been there when their father hasn't the drama continues as ms mitchell and her mom stand firm against mr robinson's claims who's telling the truth in this tangled web of lies and accusations it's a showdown of he said she said and there's only one way this ends with the dna test results mr robinson you are the father <laughs> <laughs> so now before i ask Ms. Mitchell, if it would be okay if you meet your daughter for the first time, I have to say, concerning the arbitration. Ms. Strong just brought Ms. McLean to court to prove that her husband is not the father of Ms. McLean's 14-month-old daughter, Angel. Yeah, I needed a minute to process that, too. The plot thickens when Ms. McLean claims that Mr. Strong is indeed the father. It's another tangled web of relationships. Ms. McLean to court to prove that your husband did not father her 14-month-old daughter, Angel. You say one month ago, Ms. McLean calls you out of the blue and claim Mr. Strong was her child's father and demands did he take care of her, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. McLean, you say your daughter is the product of a night of passion gone wrong and you are certain Mr. Strong is the father, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It all started when Ms. Strong and Ms. McLean decided to have a threesome with Mr. Strong for their birthdays. Yep, you heard that right, threesome for birthdays. Things escalated quickly and before they knew it, they were in court trying to figure out who the daddy is. She did get pregnant, of which we were under the understanding she or there was a medical reason she couldn't. So, so before you all had this threesome, you set parameters. Yes, Your Honor. What were the rules? Um, it would always be the three of us, never separately. If a baby came out of it, we'd raise it together, the three of us. You all were this thorough? Yes, Your Honor. Did you get it in writing? <laughs> no, Your Honor. 
Mr. Strong, you were nervous at first. Yes, Ron. Can you imagine sitting down with your friends and planning out the rules for a threesome? Well, that's exactly what these three did. They set parameters, like always being together and raising any potential baby as a trio. Talk about a modern family. So you had more than one threesome? Yes, ma'am. How many more threesomes did you have? We've had a total of eight of them. Eight We've had times? eight of them since before my daughter's birth and after it. Two and a half to three weeks after we had our very first threesome, I found out I was pregnant. And you said you had eight of them? Correct. So you were still having threesomes with them through your pregnancy? And after. Okay. Mr. and Ms. Strong, when Ms. McLean came and told you she was pregnant. But wait, it gets even juicier. Ms. McLean drops the bombshell that she found out she was pregnant just two and a half to three weeks after their first threesome. And get this, they had a total of eight threesomes before and after her pregnancy. That's a lot of bonding time. But to be honest with you, a white person and a black person can still have a white baby. Well, no, they can't. They technically can, not to argue with you. Look I it have up. mixed nieces and nephews. No. And... What, what they can have is an albino, is, but still. Uh, is a biracial child. You are correct, Miss McLean, that a black man and a white woman can make very fair-skinned children. Damn! So Ms. McLean is in a relationship with someone else while having threesomes with Mr. and Ms. Strong. Drama alert! She kept telling her boyfriend at the time that he was the father. But with eight threesomes in the mix, things are about to get even messier. I haven't been around either. We were going back and forth to Chicago to all the doctors for her eye. She has a problem with her eye. It's a hemangioma. Her blood vessels grow too quickly in her eye. My daughter was more important than even contacting them. So you said we'll deal with DNA issues later? Correct. Understood. But now you feel certain Mr. Strong is Angel's biological father. I do. When Ms. McLean finally reveals she's pregnant, Ms. Strong asks if it's Mr. Strong's child, to which Ms. McLean says no. But with all the steamy nights they've had together, who knows what the truth really is? This is like a soap opera playing out in real life. And so you have opened up your home and your hearts to this little girl. Yes, ma'am. And you as well, Ms. Strong. That, Absolutely. That's, and, and it's because you knew openly that you were going into this threesome situation and you all obviously weren't being responsible and using any type of extra birth control. Well, because Ms. McLean thought she couldn't get pregnant again. She said she had an accident, which we knew about the accident that she couldn't have children from. That's what we looked at. As the court proceedings unfold, Ms. Strong is adamant that Angel does not look African American, which throws yet another twist into the mix. Ms. McLean argues that a white person and a black person can have a white baby, but Ms. Strong is not buying it. She's been telling me for, you know, a year that she's not, but I went back to the time of conception and she didn't leave my bed that night, so... She didn't leave your bed? No. no. And she told us for a year that he wasn't the father, and that's the only reason we're here today. There would have been no question if she would have just came to us. This is something else. When's the last time the three of you had a threesome? Two weeks ago. I would say two weeks and three days. The back and forth between the parties is heating up as they try to unravel the mystery of Angel's paternity. With multiple possibilities on the table, including Mr. Strong and an African-American man, the courtroom is buzzing with anticipation. Who will be revealed as Angel's biological father? Mr. Strong, you are not the father. I'm sorry to have to deliver that news, Mr. and Ms. Strong. It seemed like you were very happy at the thought of having Angel as your little girl, but unfortunately, you are not her biological father. So we've got Mr. Fox here, who's not sure if Miss Hood is his daughter. He claims that Miss Tinker, the mother, was getting cozy with more than one man around the time of conception. Talk about a complicated family tree. You say you've never been sure that Miss Tinker's daughter, Miss Hood, is your biological child. You claim that Miss Tinker was having sex with more than one man at the time her daughter was conceived, so it's been impossible for you to fully accept her into your life. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Miss Tinker, you meant to sleeping with multiple men. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Tinker is here to set the record straight after 20 years of waiting. She wants Mr. Fox to step up and take responsibility for their daughter. But hold up, she drops a bombshell. She told another man he was the father and even named her daughter after him. Drama alert. Went around circles, played games, hung up on me, never gave me any real answer to why he's denying but her. 20 years? Yes, 20 years. For I've been 20 working with him. years? I've been trying to get him to understand that she's his daughter for 20 years. But for the first 
first six years, your daughter claimed that she thought another man, she was told another man was her father, and she's even named after him. Yes, yeah, she is, y'all. Now, Miss Hood is in the mix, and she's ready to walk away if the DNA test proves Mr. Fox is not her biological dad. She's even asking the court to change her last name to his if he turns out to be the father. Not to my knowledge that I can remember. I, I can remember me being three months later. Not that you can remember or your, not. Your Honor, she, she, I, your Honor, she not, had, I was just been 20 your, years, Your Honor. Your Honor, she had other boyfriends. She was messing around with other people, too. She was smashing the homies and everybody else. Okay, now, Mr. Fox, that's a strong allegation. Do you have proof of that? You were saying that while you were sleeping with Miss Tinker... Miss Tinker spills the tea on how she thought another man was the father because Mr. Fox and his dad said he couldn't have kids. But wait, Mr. Fox comes in swinging, claiming Miss Tinker was smashing the homies. What a plot twist. You know, that might cause a doubt. Okay, well, I can explain and, that, y'all. And, and, and I can honor, explain that. And, your honor, first, we met at a party, drunk. Both of us was drunk, under the mm -hmm. influence of alcohol. Yeah. She used to sneak outside. So mm -hmm. why she acting like she, yeah, she was a church girl? Yeah, because my mama was trapped. Yeah, I was. She I, snuck I out the window. Out. She snuck out the window. Mm -hmm. Miss you know. Tinker defends herself, saying she wasn't smashing any homies and that Mr. Fox was the one playing games. But Mr. Fox is still not convinced, especially since Miss Tinker had another man sign the birth certificate. Miss Tinker tries to explain, but Mr. Fox is not having it. The paternity test, and we took the paternity test, and he was proven not to be her father. I, so now was, you've had a DNA test on this other man. Yes, I did. He took the paternity test, he came back, my daughter was 16 months when he came back. He still was a better man than you, mm -hmm. and he still took took paternity of her and let her keep his name. And my, I felt he was a real good man, a better man than you would ever began to be, and I went out with that. The drama continues as Miss Tinker reveals the chaotic circumstances surrounding Miss Hood's birth. From sneaking out of windows to signing birth certificates, this family saga has more twists and turns than a pretzel. I do at home. I didn't bring it with me because I thought it didn't matter. I thought my proof of my daughter being here looking like him was enough. I do have paternity papers. Now, Miss Tinker, you knew you were coming to court. Yes, I did. When you come yes, to I court, did. you're supposed to bring all relevant she paperwork. She like, okay, like but mother. I know I am, but I really feel as if that other man and him stepping up and taking a paternity test has nothing to do with the fact that this man seeing his daughter when she was three years old, he's seeing what she, who she looked like. He knows she don't. He knows the other man. As the truth unfolds, Mr. Fox's doubts are put to the test. Miss Tinker stands her ground, determined to prove that Mr. Fox is the father of Miss Hood. Will the DNA test finally bring closure to this 20-year-old mystery? Mr. Fox. You are her father. Like I said a long time ago, and now where are you gonna stand up? We ain't gonna stand and take responsibility. I know, I wasn't smashing no homies. Sorry. Can I give a hug, y'all? Absolutely. <laughs> Apologize to you too, I'm sorry.